So six inductees tonight in the Hall of Fame and more than six wonderful stories have been shared. So to the highlight of the night, the most exclusive club in Australian football, which as we stand here now has 25 members. Three of those are about to run the initiation rites as the 26th legend of Australian football is unveiled. Our inductee once missed the first six games of the season. And he kicked, when he came back and played his first game in round seven, he kicked 12 goals. That's a good start to the season. In his second game of the year in round eight, he kicked 10. That's a very good start to the season. And in his third game in round nine, he kicked 12. That's 34 games, 34 goals in the first three games of the season. That continued, of course, towards the end of the season. When in his last four games, he kicked 13 goals, he kicked 10 goals, then 11 goals, and then nine goals. He kicked 34 goals in the first three games and 43 goals in the last four games of the season. In fact, he only played 17 games for the year and kicked 127 goals. He was a mighty player. He was big, he was strong. He was courageous, he took a great mark, he was a great kick. He was an out-and-out -out champion, one of the greatest that's ever played the game. Our inductee this evening um, is a, uh, has been a great player for a long time, and that in itself speaks for itself. He's been there for 18 years, and he's played magnificently. He's a big man, strong, powerful, and uh, he was a man who could take the mark either from behind, in front, or from the side. He could also scoop it up. And unfortunately, if somebody got in his way, bad luck, uh, because that's just how the game was with this particular player. He was, uh, he was fantastic. Um, I guess today, if you looked at uh, today's uh, games, I think about him being in, if he was available to be in today's draft. He'd be the first man selected. He'd have the other 18 clubs all lined up and uh, the CEOs would have their pencils out and they'd all be trying to get to sign his autograph first because he was such a great player. There's two things in footy that really stand out to all of us who've played the game and I think most of us always have asked ourselves this and I know the coaches have. Uh, you have to be able to get the ball and then you have to be able to dispose of it in a skillful manner. This player had both of those. He's a big tick with a plus. And the thing that stood out for me, watching him play, was the fact that he had the excellence to finish it off. And when you watch today's game, and you watch this guy perform, you'll understand and see what I mean. He will walk in and be very comfortable amongst the other legends that are already there. And uh, I'd like to welcome him. Thank you. A wonderful competitor, fierce, with his attack on the football. If an opposition player valued his health, he certainly did not want to be caught between the player kicking the ball to him and that player himself. One of his former teammates tells that the coach at the time decided that every Wednesday they would have a players meeting and each player in turn would talk about his opponent to be that weekend his respective uh, abilities, his faults, and you know anything else about that player that, that they all maybe should know. When it came to our inductee tonight, for his turn, as far as it was concerned, he looked up and he said, who the hell are we playing? And if by a Wednesday, you really haven't uh, bothered about who you're playing, you're certainly not going to lose too much sleep about which individual you're playing against. A magnificent kick, a really wonderful footballer, and there is no doubt in the world that a true legend he is going to be.
Will he write his name in the record book forever? Come on. Please. With this kick, it's going to go. Got it. The greatest goal kicker the game has known becomes a legend of the sport he dominated. The 26th legend in the Australian Football Hall of Fame is Tony Lockett. Before you, Tony, are the greats of every living generation of the sport, and you stand here as a legend. What comprehension of the honour do you have as it settles with you? Oh, well, I'm a bit overwhelmed, I think. It's, um, it's a, a huge honour. Um, and I don't really know what to say, mate, to tell you the truth, but um, I am uh, yeah, very honoured to, um, to be here tonight. This is actually my second function in eight months, uh, so I'm, You're getting, back I'm getting quite a social yes. aren't I? Um, and I've actually had a talk to Mike Sheen too tonight, oh. so uh, things are on the improve. Uh, I certainly am very honoured and as I said, it, um, a little bit overwhelmed because this is, uh, you know, to me, as, as, as good as it gets. It's a special night, but it's a rare night. At your table, you've got the whole... Lockett family. You've got mum and dad, yeah. siblings, your wife and your four daughters, and never before have they been gathered at a football function. No, nah, the, oldest, the oldest two would have, um, they were around uh, at the end of, the, of, of the end of my career, but the number three and four, they, um, they haven't had much to do with the footy at all. I took them to um, Sydney and St Kilda at the SCG about three years ago, I think, but that's about, I think, the only time they would have uh, had much to do with footy. What do they know about the old man? Um, he's a bit of a soft get when it comes to wanting uh, some new clothes and all that sort of stuff. And uh, the old girl has got to draw the line a bit on, a, on, a, on him a bit, and uh, then it, it's just off to dad, and, and he just hands it over to him. So, but that's all right. They're beautiful daughters. They've been great kids. We've had no trouble with them. The second one's got a boyfriend now, so that's a bit of a worry. <laughs> um, a worry for him, I reckon. <laughs> So yeah, I just got to keep an eye on a few things there, mate. Mm. <laughs> Your dad's here. Your dad yeah. was a bit of a country footy legend as well. Growing up, what did you know about his footy prowess? Oh no, nah, not a great deal. Um, but um, yeah, so the uh, so the story goes, and he'll probably have to tell you himself. He was pretty good. So, mm. but no, he like got around, and he was. Uh, you know, uh, with North Ballarat and, out, and then out with Lexton, and um, you know, he's he's had a big, a big career and, and, a, and a lot of um, you know a lot to do with Ballarat football, and he's been uh, he's been terrific for me. He's been great, helped me out in the early days, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. You were playing under twelves when you were an eight-year-old. Did you have a bit of size about you then? No, nah, no, nah, I was just, I was no, nah, I was only a little fella, but um, yeah, I was out there, but I wasn't doing much like. Uh, <laughs> But it was all, you know, I mean, you've got to start somewhere, so um, we get thrown in the deep end a bit there, but that was, that was good. Played with North Ballarat, and what a, you know, it's been a great club um, right through, uh, you know, my junior, junior days there, and, and, you know, from all I can remember is uh, just a wonderful club, wonderful blokes around the club, wonderful coaches, um, very successful. Mick Moldes, I come from North Ballarat as well. Greg Burns, an old teammate of mine. Um, so it's just been a, a wonderful grounding and I really appreciate the start that you know, everyone at North Park gave me. So when you were a junior, did you crave it? Was, was footy really in your soul or well, was it just something you were good at? No, I think, I think you crave it. I think as a, as a young bloke, I, you know, I, I probably pestered the old man and whoever, whoever would want to go and have a kick of the footy. I mean, I think I was pretty mad on that, you know, so, um, you know, I think uh, there was a lot of time after school or whatever and, you know, you're just kicking the ball around all the time, but that's what every, every, all the kids do and, uh, yeah, so I think right from the word go I was, I was, um, was going to be a footballer. When were you going to be a full forward? How early did goal kicking come into it for you? Um, probably uh, really only when I went to Melbourne, I think. Um, the first year I went down uh, to Melbourne, um, I think I went down more, more as a centre-half forward 
Um, but, but once I got to St Kilda, um, I, uh, I found a nice little patch of ground in the goal square, mate. And once I had it, I didn't want to give it up. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, you know, that's, that's pretty much where I've been, you know, played my whole career. Other than one day, at, uh, I, I, um, I turned up at Princess Park in my first year and I walked into the, into the club rooms and, and into the coaches' room and my name was actually at full back. And, and I thought, oh, they must have just got that wrong, I think. Um, someone's having a bit of a joke here. Anyway, ten minutes later, the coach comes up and says, um, you won't be kicking any goals today, you're, uh, you're playing at full back. And I thought, well, oh, this is going to be interesting. I've never been down that end of the ground before. And uh, I thought, I wonder who I'm playing on. So I snuck back in the coach's room and uh, lo and behold, I've got Peter Bazusto. So as everyone knows, Peter Bazusto, he was um, you know, a great superstar player for Carlton and uh, took, I think he took a mark of the year one day, and uh, one year, and uh, he was just a great player. And I remember running out onto the ground and then heading down towards full back. And I could see the, a couple of the Carlton players are sort of half by thinking like, Where's this idiot going? He's going to the wrong end of the ground. And, and, and when Bazusto seen me coming, I think he started to rub his hands together. He was pretty happy that, um, uh, you know, the fat kid with the, with the sausage arms was making his way down to full back, I think, and he was uh, pretty keen he was going to have a, have a big day. Actually, we ended up getting beaten pretty badly that day, but I had a pretty good day myself. I ended up with 26 kicks, <laughs> which is the most kicks I've ever had in a, in a game of AFL footy. Um, due to the fact that Carlton kicked 24 points that day and I was doing the kicking. Um, so it still stands today, 26 kicks, I thought it was terrific, you know. Full backs and full forwards, uh, yeah. they're very personal duels and you would have had many in a, in a golden age. Did you, could you zero in on who your opponents were going to be and, and almost score where it's been before and what you'd like it to be today? Look, you know, over the years, I mean, I mean, as a young bloke, uh, I started off on Bruce Duell, and to me that was probably as hard as it got. It was, um, you know, I was just trying to get a kick, let alone kick a goal. It would have just been nice to get a kick on Bruce. So much respect for him. He, uh, he was such a great player. And, uh, you know, I played on him for about three years, I think, and then when finally, I probably I was the only one that was glad Bruce was retiring, but finally when Bruce retired, he left the door open for another bloke that went pretty good too, uh, Stephen Silvani. So uh, I had, you know, probably a dozen years with Sauce, and um, to this day, you know, I, I, I rate Stephen as, as my greatest opponent. We had some great battles, and uh, I will mention uh, I did kick ten on him one day at Moorabbin, which I thought was pretty good. <laughs> I, I mean, when you kick ten on Sauce, you're allowed to you're allowed to mention. I reckon. It. But in, if you're going to mention the good ones, you've got to mention the bad ones. And anyway, after the, it was, I think it was 89, and um, as a couple of the full forwards have said earlier on, sometimes you just have those days that things happen. And I don't know what happened, but it happened, you know, and it was good and I liked it. Um, anyway, so I front up next, the next year at Waverley thinking I'm, I'm just going to do the same year again. And um, as good as that, year, that, that game was at Moorabbin, it was as bad the next one, and I didn't um, I didn't trouble the score at all. There was no goals, obviously no kicks. There was no marks. There was no handballs, but that was pretty much for 280 <laughs> AFL games, and uh, really nothing. So Sos certainly got his uh, his revenge the year, you know the year after after 89. So, but I had a great battle with Sos. He was mm. a great competitor. Chris Langford was another one over a long period of time. We had some great battles. Um, a couple of intelligent blokes, Mickey Martin and uh, Rick Kennedy. A <laughs> couple of real hard heads, mate, but you know, you just, you just knew it was going to be a solid day. Mickey Martin was fantastic, mate. I, I love him. I reckon he was great, you know, and he was great for the game. We had some real good battles. We had some good wrestles too, don't worry. It was good fun. <laughs> um, Alistair Lynch, mate, he, he was... I remember one day at Waverley, it was the first time I played on Alistair, I'd had a reasonable day up to three quarter time and I went to full forward position in the last quarter and this skinny kid was walking down towards me and I thought, oh this is alright, we'll maybe get a couple more uh, in the last quarter and uh, mate, as fate would have it, Alistair just give it to me. Um, no touches again in the last quarter that day, so straight away I, I uh, had to recognise Alistair 
and uh, you know he went on to be a, a champion player, mm. one of the one of the best players I played on. Ashley McIntosh was another one from mm. West Coast. Had a lot of trouble with him. He was a great player. Um, but look, all over. I mean, there's no easy ones. Over a whole 18 years, I mean, there, there, there's been some great tussles, and you but know, it's been fantastic. You did have a few good days. There is a record that says you got them a few times. Um, what was a good day? As a full forward, what would you set yourself as a good day? Oh, a good day. I reckon. I reckon a good day was five. Five was definitely a good day. Four was what I tried to average, um, but five was a good day. But if you know, if you're lucky enough, a couple more was even better. So 22 times you kicked double figures. We should take your breath away. That wouldn't have happened in 10 years. There wouldn't have been 22 occurrences of a 10-goal bag. What was it like when you kicked double figures? Oh, wow. Well, well, it was good. <laughs> it was great, mate. Yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, that's what we do. I mean, the full forward. That's what. That's what you're there to do. Um, you're there to, to kick goals or to create goals or, or whatever. So um, yeah. I mean, you know, if you if you're kicking goals, you're doing your job and. Yeah, I've been you know, very lucky over, over 18 years. You were in a greater era of goal kickers with Jason Dunstall and Gary Ablett. Mm. Was the competition actually very personal? Uh, for me it was, you know, I always wanted to know how many Dunstall kicked. Um, and I probably haven't said that before, but <coughs> I, I, I always wanted to know how he was going. And uh, I think over the course of a lot of years, um, our rivalry between the two of us, even though there wasn't much said about it, I think we probably spurred each other on a bit. Um, but I was hell bent on beating him. I, I just wanted to kick more, and I, I just, uh, you know, he, he, I think he carried me through, you know, right through. I think he was, uh, he was a great player, and he was, um, you know, lucky enough to play a state game with him, and that was a great thrill. That was the Teddy Whitten day. No, no, that uh, that was. Um, a bit earlier on, uh, the, the, the Teddy's last game was at uh, at the MCG. Um, played with Gary Ablett that day, and does go down as one of my uh, one of my favourite games, one of my great memories. Um, it was great to, to be down in front of the goals and looking over at my teammate here, and it was Gary Ablett. You know, doesn't get much better than that, mate. No, no, it wouldn't. Um, two of your most famous kicks. One's a behind in a preliminary yep. final. And one, I'm no goal kicking authority, but one's a wobbly dipping ball that yeah, is not yeah. the best off the yeah. boot, but it breaks the record. You are you, the game's greatest goal kicker is probably best remembered for two that you'd like to have back. Yeah, two two shockers. Um, the, 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 yeah, the the point against Essendon in the preliminary finals. Actually, just talking to Kevin Sheedy about that earlier on. Um, I'd done I'd done nothing all night. I, I had a pretty ordinary game, but the boys were, were terrific all night and just. You know, as fate has it, sometimes 20 seconds to go, you get a mark and you make a difference. You know, so that was my only contribution for the night. But it ended up being not too bad. You know, it was all right. Mm. Um, and then, of course, yeah, the the, um, the record at the SCG up the other end. Um, you know, there'd been a lot of talk about it. It was good to just get it over and done with. And um, but yeah, it it um, it was it was a mongrel punt. It was, but it, it went straight. So it was amazing. Does that record mean something to you, Tony? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean. You know, it's a lot of years' work going into it, but I mean, it was, certainly wasn't uh, something that I was aiming at at all. It was really only the last couple of years when I thought that you know I was probably in reach of it that uh, I even give it a second thought, really. But um, yeah, it does mean something. I mean, you, you look back on it, and, and I'm very proud of it. Um, but um, you know, like nights like tonight, um, this is this means this means you know more tonight. It's fantastic. There's a hundred apocryphal stories about you, I'm sure. How engaged were you in football? There's the notion that you didn't know who you were playing on, you didn't know who that your teammates were, which I'm sure are stories that have just grown and grown. How invested in you were you in your footy career? I think I sort of went up and down a bit. Yep. I think at times, um, you know, I, I probably could have been a little bit more applied in my, um, my craft, but, uh, <laughs> man, you, what you see is what you get, you know, like... Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm physically a little bit different over over 20 year, or 18 years, um, but that's okay. I'm all right. I mean, uh, not everyone can be built like a great athlete either, can they? So um, it did have its um, it did have its uh, benefits. Maybe is that the word I'm looking for? I don't really know there. But look, um, I remember in the in the 70s as a kid growing up, there was a bloke getting around for North Melbourne. Uh, at Arden Street that day that uh, everyone used to love, uh, a fellow by the name of Mickey Nolan. 
uh, the galloping gasometer. <laughs> like, oh, just, what a great nickname. Well, Louis Richards come up with a good one for me. About mid-80s when I'd had a summer that I'd probably had too much donuts and not enough exercise, <laughs> and I turned back up to, at Moorabbin there and he, uh, he, nick, he nicknamed me Two Ton Tony, <laughs> um, which he was probably right, and he did say that when, uh, when the players at, down at St Kula were doing their warm-up, they just used to run two laps around me. So, <laughs> But that was Louis Richards. Louis Richards, to me, was just, mate, he just, you know, the greatest Collingwood man ever, and I loved him, and I reckon he was great. He was great for the game. He was a good friend. And uh, yeah, a lot of great memories with Louis. So there were the goals, and then there was the rage. The red mist would descend from time to time. Oh, yeah, every now and again, but I mean that's you know that that happens. You know, it's um, part and parcel of the game, really, isn't it? Uh, um, you know, it's, the game's definitely quietened down a little bit these days. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there was quite a bit of player and crowd interaction back when I was playing, and obviously spending. Most of my time very close to the goal umpire, I got to hear and see and and uh, cop a fair bit, which was terrific. You know, I mean that's the way it is. You just got to, um, you know, you got to absorb it. Um, and and, and well, there was a little bit going on today with me, old mate Goodsy. He's uh, he's a bit of play interaction with the crowd the other day. Um, I thought he was actually looked like he was gigging for Dancing with the Stars myself. <laughs> Adam's a champion bloke and he's, and he's, and he's a fantastic ambassador for our game and, and uh, for everything that he stands for and I love him to death. Um, but look, as I said, you know, that's just the way it is. You win some, you lose some. you just got to get on with it and go again, you know. You played one grand final, you didn't waste it, you kicked six goals. Did yeah. you... The Premiership was elusive, it was beyond your grasp. Did you leave the game fulfilled with what you'd done? Um, look, we all play for a Premiership win. We, you know, that's the ultimate goal, and I think you know, ask anyone, they'll give you the same answer. I'm very thankful just to play in one. I, it was just enormous, mate. It was a great day, and uh, you know, I remember it um, to a T. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we never got we got we never got the bickies that day. But to be actually just out there on Grand Final day is really made 18 years of football worthwhile. And I, we struggled early on at Secula. Like I think the first three or four years I played, we were wooden spooners. And then to go to Sydney after they'd been struggling a bit early 90s and then to have a bit to do with, you know, rebuilding that club in the mid-90s, you know, to the end of the, to 99, was, um, you know, it was great too because it was a great bunch of blokes went through there and they've been a great, strong club ever since. And it's, you know, as the boys were saying, it's just the people that you have around the club. And, um, you know, um, all the hard work was put in and, and, you know, they're bearing all the fruits. The last 15 years have been... Terrific. Sydney has been a great club for me. It was they give me the opportunity when I probably had a question mark, even at myself, um, as to whether you know I was going to be any benefit to them in '95. But they, give, they you know they showed faith. They give me they give me a chance, and well, hopefully I repaid them. I reckon you did. Did you miss it, or were you glad to get away from it? And maybe that's not a question in the past tense. Is are you glad to be at arm's length from footy? Or is it nice to walk back into its embrace from time to time? No, no, it's good to get back. I mean, um, you know, I don't have a, you know, a huge amount to do with it like a lot of, uh, a lot of people. But, you know, I still keep a tab on things and I still, uh, I still like getting here and catching up with, you know, with a lot of people. But, um, you know, I had 18 years of it and that was, you know, that was, that was, that was plenty. Could I, you know, I probably what I, you know, when I think back now, um, you know, my, first, my oldest daughter was ready to go to school when I retired and that was probably made the decision a bit easier back then but um, I probably should have stuck out another year then and, instead of trying to make a comeback in 02 <laughs> I think you know. Uh, there's a I think there's a black van with a bike on the back of it in valet parking is there any truth that that's yours? That's yeah it's all true mate yeah. So. Where's your next stop Tony? Uh, I'm off to Alice Springs tomorrow and I'm off uh, to do a bit of a ride across the Simpson Desert and uh, tear it up it'll be good yeah looking forward to it. I bet you are. Uh, you went back to the Swans last year for the best and fairest. You presented Lance Franklin with his yep. Coleman medal. I, I probably haven't got you pegged as a great Twitter follower, but his What's photo, it? his pro, his profile photo is you and him. You Lance, go. you are the idol's idol. I was amazed how big he was. I couldn't believe it. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, look, it was great to get back there because that's, you know, that's the club I played with and good to catch up with all the boys. I had a great night and it was really good to... You know, sit back there and have a good yak to him, and uh, you know he's a he's a great player to watch. If I asked you in closing, how do you make sense of it? How did you make sense of your 18-year footy career, more goals than anybody else, and tonight acknowledged as a legend of the game? 
Well, as I said earlier, I'm not like when I first come up here, it, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a huge honour. Just as you know, I can't explain how, how I feel. It's just amazing to be, uh, to be, you know, to be here in front of so many great footballers and legends and that. And um, you know, I, I really, as I said, I'm struggling for words a bit because I, <laughs> um, the company is so good. And uh, I, you know, I've got so many people that uh, you know I'd like to thank. Um, I think you should. No worries. Um, but yeah, as I said, I'd just like to thank. Um, First of all, North Bay Football Club for giving me the opportunity to, to play footy as a kid. Um, it was a great grounding. The St Kilda Football Club for, for 12 years there. I had uh, some great memories there. There were some great days down at Moorabbin in the mud, um, which was uh, fantastic. A lot of great teammates there, and um, we certainly, you know, we had a good time, and uh, it was good to good to play there. And I, I loved every minute of it. It was a great club with great supporters and uh, a lot of great people there. To Sydney for, uh, as I said, for giving me that chance that I needed to uh, probably start again and um, prove that I still had what it took, and um, you know, just to, to finish on a good note because I think that's a bit that was eating me, eating, you know, eating away at me early on that I just needed to, uh, you know, to do the right thing and, and finish on a good note. Um, to uh, to all my family, thank you very much for all your support. Uh, my mother and father have been great all along. My sisters, my brother, my wife have been fantastic. She's been there pretty much the whole time. She probably needs to be up here getting this medal instead of me. Uh, the girls, thank you very much for all your support and uh, um, you know for being just great kids. And I think that's one thing I'm very lucky. I've just got great kids, and I'm very grateful for that. So the AFL for you know inducting me up here. Uh, as I said, I'm blown away. I'm totally overwhelmed with it. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm very honoured, and to all the, you know, to everyone here, to all the people, supporters um, of every of all the clubs, and to just to AFL uh, as a whole, thank you very much.